All right, welcome back everyone to Spill the Lee Chi Tea with your host, Simply Trendly. Yeah, that's right. Um, we're back after a uh, one week break because um, I've been like busy a lot creating new content and such things, uh, doing things for my side job that I have. Um, and yeah, just, just, just being creative and and doing a lot of things the youtube channel has been growing amazingly um so has the twitch channel as well uh tiktok like all social media platforms that i'm active in um have really been amazing uh sorry that we're like not like getting into the story immediately like i i don't know I, I thought it was just like nice to give like an update on like what's happening in the week that i haven't been able to upload the podcast so we've been uh, we've been improving or increasing the amount of like short form content that we bring out, and I just uh, I just yeah I just really appreciate like everyone like supporting uh, the YouTube channel again like this podcast is like also pro broadcasts on YouTube, and it's just like I re I just really appreciate it like like the YouTube channel has been growing really nicely and a lot of people have been um, supporting and and um yeah it's 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 just been really enjoyable doing this because of that though like creating long form content like the podcast has kind of like uh gone back a bit and i have to admit i was like i was trying to like make like a script but it's just it's just so long so um so I, I do have like a few things prepared, but like I didn't write the entire script. So the sto like the story that I'm going to talk about today, it has a lot of um, information. It is, um, it's an unsolved case. It's not like, so last time we had like an unsolved murder case, but this time we have like an unsolved crime case. Uh, it's like a lot of crimes, not just one. So, uh, I, f I think it's going to be amazing to tell you guys about this, right? Um, also, one last thing before we start with the story. Uh, <laughs> so, 80% of the people that are listening to the podcast or, like, watching on YouTube are not subscribed to the channel. Um, even if you're not, like, listening to this on YouTube, uh, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel just to like help out um, with monetization um, because to be honest like creating all these things for YouTube so far um, like it hasn't been able to be monetized yet so it would be like you need like a certain amount of like subscribers and you need a certain amount of like listeners um, on like the podcast level like you can just start like getting money like like from the get-go i think the <laughs> the bare minimum is like have two podcast uh, like i have two episodes uploaded right um and then you can start like uh getting money obviously it's 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 not that easy it also depends on like how many people are listening i haven't enabled monetization for like the podcast yet um, but yeah, again, like for YouTube, it would be really um, nice if you guys helped me out and just went to the YouTube channel um, and subscribed to it. Um, yeah, maybe you realize that like in the background, there's like music that's really popular. It's not in DMCA though. Uh, just uh, gonna have like credited the the piano player of these songs is called Mio. He also has um, a YouTube channel. And yeah, like his music is DMCA free. He has like no intention of claiming uh, any fees. And so I'll be using his music tonight for episode six of Spill the Leash ET. All right, we are going to talk about the unsolved candy crimes. That's not the name of the story, but like, I, I like to think of them as like the unsolved candy crimes. But yeah, so the story is called The Story of the Monster with the 21 Faces. The story takes place in the 80s in Japan. And it starts with 
the manufacturer, the um, the CEO of a Japanese candy ma manufacturer um, called Ezaki Gliko. That's the company, um, and the dude that's been kidnapped is called Kazu Katsuhisa Ezaki, right? Ezaki Gliko is his company, and Kazu Katsuhisa Ezaki is the CEO of this company and on uh, 18th March of 1984 he gets kidnapped uh, while taking a bath at his home in Osaka like his children are at home and like like even though his children are at home they like they the kidnappers like intrude into his home uh, beat him up and then like kidnap him um afterwards like the company gets um a ransom note which is asking for 1 billion yen and 100 kilograms of gold um and yeah like they 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 ask for that money to be delivered to i think a random like phone cell uh, but before anything can happen like before any money can be uh can be transferred or like delivered to that place um katsuhisa ezaki is able to escape uh he breaks free from his bindings um and he can leave the isolated warehouse where he's kept as a prisoner he walks down the road he meets two railroad workers and he asks them for help and they contact the police uh, now Kazuhisa Ezaki is safe and like he's back in the company and obviously he's trying to like find out who uh, the kidnappers were. It is at least two kidnappers um, and um, like the police is doing everything in their like possibility right and the Japanese po uh, po uh, police at this time has like a like a crazy high uh, rate of like finding criminals like it's it's really admirable like they have a really good standing in uh in japanese society and they're like they're doing a great job right like in general but like with this case it's going to be completely different so katsuhisa is not able to identify his captors she doesn't know how they look like he was like blindfolded he was uh capped in like bindings and stuff like that he has no clue who his kidnappers were um now you might think like oh the kidnappers are going to try and lay low because they failed in kidnapping uh katsuhisa ezaki uh but like you're thinking wrong because they're like you know what we can still do this right so ezaki glico the company is a candy ma manufacturer so what do the kidnappers say the kidnappers demand still demand money they demand four hundred eighty thousand us dollar or else they're gonna poison candies that are made by the company Izaki Kliko, and they're gonna poison it with cyanide, which is one of the worst poisons out there. Like biting on a cyanide capsule, that's like one of the most gruesome deaths that you can experience. So no one really wants that to happen, right? So, but like the company is like, yeah, we don't believe you guys. Like you guys are like super amateurs. You kidnapped our like CEO and you weren't even able to like keep them uh, in, like keep him in your like warehouse and stuff like that. They were able to flee. Like you're total amateurs. You, you don't have what it takes to do these kind of stuff, right? So the kidnappers are like, you know, uh, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna show you, right? So on April 10th, uh, a number of vehicles outside of the company HQ uh, were set on fire and yeah like it just showed that the kidnappers are able to snuck into the company's headquarters and set fire to the company without any like no one was able to like see like oh where the like like how many people who was it what do they what did they look like no one knew they just snuck in, set fire to a bunch of like vehicles and just disappeared again. Now the police was not able to find anything. They didn't have any suspects, they didn't have any evidence. They had nothing. 
it was like a huge media attention to this case because the kidnappers also like continued to write letters and send uh, evidence or not evidence, but like hints to like the media. So the media was like all over this case, right? And um, the public, because of that, was was shocked at how incompetent the police force suddenly appeared in face of the kidnappers. They were like, apparently they were amateurs. Um, at least that's what the police like told the public. And they were like, um, yeah, like, like they were like dropping hints in media and they were like asking for people to try and help the police. So the kidnappers, they, they are starting to mock the police. They're sending evidence. They're saying like, oh, you guys think that we were in this car? No, we weren't. The car that we drove, like they're straight up giving like hints. They're like, oh, you think we're like in that car? Like that was not the car. Our car was this color. It was this like brand. And the police is like, fuck, we, we still don't know who you guys are. So... Um, one of the letters that the police, um, like, receives, I, uh, want to, like, read out to you. So it starts like this, quote. To the stupid police. Are you idiots? What are you doing with so many people? If you were pros, you wouldn't catch us. Because you guys have such a high handicap, we're gonna give you some hints. If you can't catch, catch us with the, after this much info, you guys are just thieves of the taxpayers' money. Should we also kidnap the head uh, of the prefectural police? End quote. So after this, there were like a lot of other like letters coming in to the police, coming into the media, and um, and yeah, like again, like the police was like they they were restless, they didn't know, but they still didn't give the money in. Like even after the kidnappers set fire outside of the Glico HQ. They were like, yeah, we're not giving like them any money. Like just because they were able to like enter the facilities, we still do not believe that they are able to do this. So after that, in May of 1984, um, both Glico and local Osaka media received letters claiming that cyanide-laced packs of the company's candy would be placed on the shelves. The letters signed by a person or a group choosing to be called the monster with the 21 faces so what i gather from this is there's like why the monster of the, with the 21 faces so apparently there's a story called the monster with the 20 faces uh by the mystery writer rampo edogawa um but why specifically they chose that name and added just a number so instead of monster with the 20, uh, 20 faces, they called themselves the monster with the 21 faces. There's no explanation found on the internet. Like, no one really has a clue. There are a few assumptions uh, which you can, like, read about if you want to. But um, no clue. Like, uh, like no one really knows. It's a 1946 children's story. story and, um, yeah, it can also be translated to the fiend with the 21 faces. Um, but yeah like it's 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 really unclear what the name is supposed to mean anyways so they sent like the the information that they like that they placed in shops and grocery stores these candy boxes uh with with cyanide as a poison in them and and obviously like there's a mass pa panic um Glico pulled 21 million dollars worth of product from the store shelves in Japan and like suffered a major blow with the sales um and like a lot of like workers were laid off the company was like on the brink of like uh dissolution and dissolving um but yeah despite all the damage despite what all of them said um like all the candy was controlled and there was absolutely no sign sorry there was absolutely no poison found um inside of the candy
but yeah so um again like like this is like mm, sorry i had like a moment where i had to like think um and like check facts so i have like two cheat sheets here like right in front of me and i'm like it's it's two different like sources basically and i'm like looking around it like looking okay because they they have like basically the same kind of information but like each source has like their own kind of spin and theories right so um like one says that none contained any oh no wait oh so this is like so so next up <laughs> sorry all right so again like this is today is without a script because honestly like it's it, it took so long to like write a script but yeah okay so so after this like so they pull all their candies back right they they control it there's no cyanide in any of the candy now in september 1984 so the, that first case was like in may right now by september 1984 um they re like the the company glico um Oh, they do not okay so it's not clico anymore it's a different uh it's a different candy manufacturer it's called they are called morinaga so this time morinaga um receives the letter that's asking for four hundred ten thousand uh us dollars otherwise they're going to do the same shit they did with glico they're going to coat uh candy and like other products with cyanide oh and they actually put this letter in this they put this letter in right quote to moms throughout japan in autumn when appetites are strong sweets are really delicious when you think sweets no matter what you say it's morinaga we've added some special flavor the flavor of potassium cyanide is a little bitter it won't cost tooth decay so buy the sweets for your kids We've attached a note on these bitter sweets that they contain poison. We've put 20 boxes in stores from Hakata to Tokyo. Quote end. Um, yeah, the same day, all over Japan, in grocery stores, uh, they find these packages um, with like labels written on them saying danger, cyanide. Uh, out of like 18 like the letter says like there were 20 packages but 18 were discovered 18 were tested and all of them were um were like confirmed to have had cyanide in them for the next two weekends 40,000 police officers across the country were like put close to grocery stores and like trying to like f like like see any like um suspicious people but because at this point at this point there's still no suspects there's no one no one knows who this monster with the 21 faces is they have no suspects they have no evidence they have nothing they have no clue the police is like is at its wits end and somewhere i even read that the police like the the head police commissioner that was like in charge of this uh case stepped down and after stepping down committed suicide um i don't know which source it was but like i think that's what i read uh, in one of the sources but like like that's like that's how far this goes like the police is absolutely like they are they are like at their wits ends they know nothing they have no fucking clue as to what is happening now even after this like huge thing right with like with like actually having potassium cyanide inside of like the candy uh and now like forty thousand like police officers like standing around like watching grocery stores and stuff like that 
nothing new came up. And after this, um, the case was like, like the case was still going on, but like, the, like the police didn't really know what to do, so they re didn't really like continue investigating in this area. And for like around a year or maybe half a year, nothing else happened until in 1985 on Valentine's Day, more cyanide poisoned um, like candy showed up. Um, now, this time, there was a suspect, a man by the name of Manabu Miyazaki, who was I, I, uh, sorry, who was identified because there was a release of a composite sketch of like eyewitnesses. Uh, like the sketch was also called the fox-eyed man, so it like depicted a man with like I don't know whatever, whatever fox-eyed like means. But yeah, so apparently there was like this person and um, the man, um, Manabu Miyazaki, is also an outlaw. He's a criminal with ties to Yakuza. And um, yeah, he looked like the person on the sketch. So they're like, yo, like this is going to be him, right? Um, they ask him, they question him. He denies everything. He denies everything um and yeah he had an alibi it wasn't able like they did not have any evidence so at the end like all accusations were dropped um and yeah in 1985 in august like like the japanese public was furious because the police was not able to pinpoint to anyone their only suspect was um was was released and oh okay so this is the account that i'm like talking about so it's called it's a youtube video uh called the gliko morinaga incidents japan's greatest unsolved mystery and so here it says uh shoji yamamoto uh who was the case superintendent out of shame he set himself on fire and would ultimately pass, uh, pass away so he didn't even step down he set himself on fire like basically as like an apology to the japanese public because even after like almost two years he was not able to find a single clue to the monster with the 21 faces now after this after this actually happened, the monster with the 21 faces wrote one more letter to the Japanese, um, to the Japanese police or to the Japanese media. Quote, No career Yamamoto died like a man, so we decided to give our condolences. We decided to forget about torturing food making companies. If anyone blackmails any of the food making companies, it's not us, but someone copying us. We are bad guys. That means we've got more to do other than bullying ca companies. The monster, uh, the monster with the 21 faces, after this last letter, they completely vanished. They did not strike again. There was nothing left behind. Like there was no, no, like again, like there was no, um, there was no, evidence there was no clue as to who who the man with the 21 faces is is it more than one person i mean we know that it has to be like more than one person right because it was two kidnappers that is confirmed that the, there were two people who intruded into katsuhisa's uh izaki's home and kidnapped him right that is confirmed but even then were these two men actually part of the 20 uh, of the monster with the 21 faces or were they just hired, for example? Like, it is not known. Is the monster with the 21 faces, is it one person? Is it two per people? Is it 21 people, right? We do not know that. It is like, there's no clue. And again, after this, after this, they they just vanished. And the, and the most interesting thing about this is because they, like, they gave these clues, right? Like every time they poisoned something, they said, on the box, there's going to be like a letter and inside of that letter, it's going to be written uh, danger, poison, don't eat. 
And actually, like, you would, like, think, okay, so they terrorized Japan for, like, two years. At least one person has to have died, right? Actually, no. Actually, no. Actually, zero people were harmed in this case. In the case of the monster with the 21 faces, no one was harmed by the criminal. One person like set themselves on fire again this case superintendent but like other than that like no one was killed by the monster with the 21 uh, faces so yeah so and they continued doing this even though they didn't get money at the end of the day they also didn't get money they stopped because like the pol as case superintendent the police officer set himself on fire afterwards they said like okay we're gonna terrorize other people basically and and then they just left right they never got any money they never got whatever they wanted and they they just disappeared um and yeah so this case is still up to this day this case is still used by the japanese public when like trying to like um argue that like the japanese police is incompetent this is mostly used this case is mostly used because up to this day it still is staying on the japanese uh, police's uh, good name and honestly from what i read the japanese police is really well respected and has one of the highest like crime solving rates uh, of all police forces in the world but yeah like like this case is still used up to this day to describe when like japanese police is inefficient But yeah, so to this day, like, again, like, they just disappeared in 1985. Um, they could still be alive. They could, like, they they could be, like, working in different countries, maybe in different Asian countries, um, just under a different name. But yeah, like, since then, nothing has been heard. And uh, it's, like, because of that, there's also, like, not a lot of, like, theories, right? Like, um, in the last two videos, we kind of, like, tried to, like, okay, so, so, like... Like, what do we have? Like, like, what are the theories? What are the theories that are, like, in public? What's the theories that are, like, in the on the internet? But there's not a lot to go on here. There, like, okay, there are, like, a few theories. Like, it was um, Kazuhisa uh, Ezaki himself. Because, like, like, a lot of people say, like, we don't believe that he was able to, like, free himself, right? And, like, like um, run away. Um that theory no one really believes in that theory because again like after that first like attempt with cyanide in in may um like the whole network of Cle uh ezaki Clico was like that was like a downward spiral they were so close to be like like yo we have to we have to file for bankruptcy right like they 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 did not have to but like they were really close. They, they lost a shit ton of money and they never recovered from that, like, fully. So, like, it doesn't really make sense that it was them themselves. And, like, like it was it would make sense, like, after that, like, uh, Morinaga was, uh, a company called Morinaga was targeted. So it would make sense, okay, yeah, like, they are trying to, like, harm their, like, competitors. But it doesn't, it doesn't make sense that they harm themselves that heavily. Like, if it was just a bit, you know, like, that's okay. But they pulled their entire stock out of every supermarket in the entirety of Japan. Made a lot of, like, lost a lot of money because of that. Because they, like, sales would go down. Uh, and, and after that, like, obviously the sales didn't go up again, right? Because, like, everyone was, like, afraid that there could still be, like, one box that is accidentally filled with cyanide. So, yeah, that really didn't, didn't work out. And again, like, that is, like, one of the theories where I'm, like, yeah, I... I do not believe that's like a viable theory. Um, the fox-eyed man, um, like the the Jack Yakuza dude, um, yeah, there was no no evidence connecting him to to any of the crimes. He had an alibi for 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 all of them, and he made a. I I think I read somewhere that he wrote a book later, um, and like he confessed to like a lot of crimes that he did. But he never confessed to this one, like, in particular. And, like, it was after... 
after like so for a crime there's only like a certain period of time where you can like get convicted for and it was like after that time like it was like in his like when he was like super old he wrote a book and he could like confess to like doing a lot of crimes because he knew that like the police would not be able to do anything against him anymore right so so he just let that happen um and wrote it down but he never he never confessed to this crime um and like a lot of people argue like okay if he really did this and he made that book because he made a lot of money out of that book um if he really did that why did he not write about this case like why did he not confess it to this case right um yeah so so that theory is also like out of the so the like the yakuza guy is also kind of like out of this in in my opinion but yeah is there anything else here on my cheat sheet i do not think so yeah like yeah, it also here states, like, Ezaki Kliko and Morinaga suffered massive losses in sales. And in Morinaga's case, perhaps even 60%. But yeah, like, the identity of the monster with the 24 faces is still unclear. And um, we do not know who they are. And what we do know is that for all the crimes that they committed, they actually never killed a person. So... Very interesting case. I really like it. But yeah, so that is the case of the monster with the 21 faces. Um, how did you like it? Um, did you enjoy it at all? Did you did, Do you have any theories? Um, let me know on my YouTube channel in the comments down below of the video. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, again, you can also like visit my, uh, my YouTube channel. You don't have to uh, to listen to it, but it would be nice, like if you like left a comment, like, "Oh, what's my theory? I read this online. Maybe it was this and that." Like, I, I would be really interested in like listening to you guys, um, you guys' like theory as to to why they did. Like, also like what I really don't get is like why did they do it, right? Like, there's no intention. Like, of course they asked for money, but they never received any. But they kept going. Right, so so money doesn't really seem to be like a thing, so I think this might more be like of like a like capitalist terrorism. So it's more against like the system. It's more against like money. It's more against like companies themselves. But you know, like I don't know. Like at the end of the day, like I don't really really know. I don't have proof for that. Um, but yeah, so so let me know in the comments down below if you're watching on YouTube. And yeah, like, thank you again um, so much for listening to Spill the Leech ET episode 6. Um, not sure what the next episode is going to be about. Though, I do kind of want to go back to stor like stories about the, like, like paranormal. I, I think the next story is going to be more like a paranormal, um, superstitious kind of episode. Maybe a bit of ghost or something like that. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening. Have a great day. Have a great night. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.